the box that's closed. In order to get that box to pop off this magnesium for this channel, we have to have chronic input to this. And that seems to be the critical uh, way this works. We have abnormal signals. The abnormal signals cause change in those pain neurons and then you lose this magnesium block. Once that happens, calcium comes in and very bad things happen to your cell. So can you tell us practically what you actually do? Okay, now, now so there's several ways to try to treat this. And um, what we really try to do now, before we give anybody ketamine, now ketamine works on this NMDA receptor, but it activates an LSD receptor. So ketamine had a very bad name because if you don't use it correctly, you hallucinate, brings back flashbacks. Uh, if you had LSD in the past and we give you ketamine, you're going to have the same hallucinations you had in the past. Uh, but we've now learned how to use this better. So it's a drug, it's an anesthetic, it's an anesthetic. that's been around for a while. And it's been around been 35 years. With, with difficulty then in the well, past. It, <clears throat> it was originally developed for children with burns. So you have a child with a burn and it really hurts to get the dressings changed. Mm -hmm. So you had to have an anesthetic where you could change the dressings of a child four or five times a day without hurting the child and having him quiet. So we, it's been used for a long time and it smooths out other anesthetics. So it's been around a long time and we know that it's safe just by using it on a lot of people. So. Uh, what, what had really happened was we knew what receptor had to be blocked. We had one anesthetic, ketamine, to block it. And then we had another break. And uh, this to me is the interesting part of the, of the story because uh, I got a letter from Germany. I got a letter from a young, um, he was an uh, intern. And in Germany, nobody can drive, there are no speed limits. Audubons look like race streets. They're not California Audubon. Every seven miles, there's a pile of dead cars, huge wrecks. I mean, it's amazing. So when you go to Germany to look at stuff, every hospital has a group of people sitting out in the sun with no arms and no legs. You do a lot of amputations from a lot of accidents, much more than you do in, that you ever see in the United States. So they've been using ketamine to block phantom pain. Mm. If you lose your arm, even though your arm's not there, it's going to be painful. So they were using ketamine, and they just had found out that that worked. So this young investigator uh, wrote me a very long letter, very apologetic. Dear Dr. Schwarzman, uh, please don't let me uh, bother you from this and that. I went on for about a page about all these apologies. Uh, because in, in Europe, uh, the access between the physician and student and professor is not there. So he wrote me this letter and said, I think this might work on your RSD patients. In fact, we did this on one patient and we think we have a cure and we would like to work with you. So I sat down and I wrote him a long letter back and that's how we started really thinking about using ketamine in different dosages. So the patient that they Cured, the first one that they did was a relative of one of the anesthesiologists. It was a, it was a cure. It was a cure. A full right. cure. So and did it, that, did it remain? Yeah, it's remained. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. five years ago. Okay. And um, this was a young lady that was dancing, disco dancing, and fell off the platform and hurt her shoulder and then got RSD pain, which is typical. And nothing was fixing it. And they were desperate. It was a relative, and the family came to... So this intern was the one yeah, who actually well, pioneered this? It was his friend. Okay. Dr. Rohr was well, I'd his like friend. To, if you don't mind, cause I'd like to get to what you're doing both, I guess, briefly there and here because we don't have that much time. This is in no, this fascinating. You are doing the ketamine, the same work that you're doing yeah, but, in Germany, you're doing here. Yeah, but yeah. differently. Okay. Doing exactly what they did with this first patient. So they took this patient and they put this patient to sleep. That patient had failed everything put this patient under anesthesia with ketamine for five days. For five days? You're unconscious for five days. You're intubated, 
you're, you are, are there just no, like an operation is, with is, no operation. Is that a risky thing Terrible. to put someone in, in a coma, essentially? Yeah, you yeah. are in a coma. So you can die. And why five days? The that's the necessary well, amount? No, that's the first patient that they did. Oh. So it worked for that and never change a winning game. Right? We're not going to experiment. Why did they choose works. five days? Well, because there's something wrong that you can look at somebody and you can look at their extremities and there's the sympathetic part of this. You can see when this disease happens, your mm -hmm. blood vessels don't constrict correctly mm -hmm. and they dilate. And they noticed on the third day in this first patient that the blood vessels started to react properly. You can see somebody with, with RSD or chronic regional pain syndrome, they come in and their blood vessels are paralyzed. The third day, these blood vessels started to work normally. Now, when you're under anesthesia, if we press on the sore nerve, you can see the pulse rate go up and your blood pressure go up if, you're still, if you st still are having pain. So you could see the progress yeah, so of the So we could see that. We knew the that cure. the sympathetics had to be better. And then we would squash the nerves, look at the blood pressure and the pulse rate, and it seemed that at, at three days it started to really work to change these receptors back, the magnesium came back, and then you could tell. But you're, you're not doing five days now. Right, now yeah. We're doing yeah. exactly the same thing in Germany that we did. Mm -hmm. Now, the FDA, as you realize, will be taking aspirin off the market shortly. Take, they've taken Celebrex off the market I didn't and know Vioxx, but I'm teasing you. But there's no way this is going to be done with FDA approval in the United States. You mean a five-day coma? Yeah, period. Yeah. Okay. Zero. So what's the alternative? What are you doing? I'm, right now, I'm only rushing you because we're yeah, going to run well, out. Well, now what we're doing is just trying to do this awake. So we're giving people ketamine to try to figure out how to do this awake. Mm -hmm. Five days awake with much smaller doses really helps the pain. And it'll block it. So you can come in totally uh, in excruciating pain and then after five days awake, we will help you. Your pain will be down to 10%. But then we're gonna have to give you boosters or it's gonna come back. So what we're working on now are ways to, we kinda know how to block the pain, but other ways to keep it away. So you can just take two pills that are not narcotics and keep it away. But the the work that you've done in Germany, were, the, those were cures, and th these well, are more 40 percent, 50 percent are cures. Well, that's really exciting. It is. It's great because it's never been done before. Now, this whole business of pain, um, I mean, it's interesting. You, you're talking about pain, and we all seem to know what it is, and yet it's such a hard thing to measure. And I wonder, um, when we talk about pain, I mean, at, in terms of trials and, and uh, clinical studies, how do you know how painful something is? I mean, it's not like a tumor or a broken leg. I mean, how, how do you have a it sense of really It is really hard to, to measure, so, but there are, a lot of, there are a lot of tricks to it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things in this particular condition, when you have it, if I stuck you with a pin on your hand and you had RSD in your hand, that pain would spread all the way up. Painful stimulus would be up to your shoulder and end of your fingers. And as we treat you, that shrinks. So when I know you're better, I touch you and I ask the patient, does that stay? And they say, yes, uh, that stays. And you have to measure it uh, by what people do. So we have watches. We put on watches and we know every movement of their arm. Mm -hmm. So a patient that's in terrible pain doesn't move at all and he maybe moves his arm 10 times. As you get better, you're moving it 75 times. Then it's 1,000 times. Then we have all of these other things. We have back. In, um, indexes on whether how depressed you are, quality of life. Which are more indexes. subjective. They're, they're yeah. all subjective. Now you have a new uh, uh, site at, at Drexel University, uh, it, uh, Neurology Infusion, infusion Suite. Center, right. uh, w and that's relatively new, and that's where you're administering these doses. We're doing the outpatient ketamine. things there, and then we, we have protocols for really sick people for the intensive care unit. But we're doing all the boosters there, and we have specially trained nurses that really uh, handle ketamine very well. And um, we 
we don't let people hallucinate. We know when. when so there is this danger of, well, essentially have. LSD hallu type right. hallucination. But if you use Ativan and Midazolam, which are drugs that block this, then you don't have that problem. All you are, you feel a little sleepy. So we really, we've used it in a different way to make it work. So would you say, I mean, you started out by talking about Philadelphia as the origin of this disease, so to Correct. speak. Would you say then that Philadelphia is going to be the site of the cure? The site of the cure is going to be in Saarbrück in Germany. Okay, where the, where the beginning of this process began. And right. you go, I take it back and forth yes. regularly? Yes, because I see the patients under anesthesia and I test them and, and uh, they did it. But uh, if we can figure out a, another way to make it better without having to go to sleep, that may be the Philadelphia But you don't think we'll ever be able to get the FDA approval for We're trying. I'm taking care of somebody very, very important in the government, and if this patient, if this works with this patient, we will be camped on his doorstep, and he has a lot of power, and we may be able to do it, so but that's how it's going to have to be done. So I guess... Not, it will not be done in regular channels, that I can tell you. Huh. So you're going to have to pull the strings of power. Yeah, but what we're going to do is if we get this person fixed, we'll have a good shot. Well, as a neurologist, I mean, just to sort of, it seems to me, you know, neurology, as far as I know, it can be a very frustrating field. Mm -hmm. So many that's, of... That's the old thing. Well, well, you're an example of new no, things. No, but it's the old thing about strokes. Well, see, very little now, that can be done no, for so that's much. that's totally wrong. Okay. <laughs> Sound like a medical student. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear this. You have a stroke, we can fix you. If you have a stroke, we're going to open up your blood vessel. We're going to give you a stent if your artery is going bad. If you have seizures, we give you medicine. If that fails, then we cut that part of your brain out. We can do, there's very little in neurology that we don't treat. That's, it's well, Dr. Totally Schwartz, so let me ask you something. Have you always had this very can-do, optimistic attitude? Me? You personally, no. I mean, or has it been yeah, just a, changes I in was the nature in, I was an field. internist first, but I'm okay. a treating guy. If you come to see me, I'm <laughs> okay. going to give you something. Okay, so you always you knew you were going to try and yeah. fix. But it changed. Yeah. MS is going to be, we have some stuff that may cure MS now. Really? Muscular? Yeah. No, distance. multiple sclerosis. Mus multiple multiple, multiple right. sclerosis, excuse we me. We may yeah. be able to give you a new bone marrow. Multiple sclerosis comes from abnormal cells in your own bone marrow. So we wipe out your bone marrow and give you a new one. And we're in the process of doing that. I'm working on, on both of these things, and it's dramatic, and we've done it with other diseases. So would you say this is an extraordinarily exciting sure. time in neurology? Anybody that's not a neurologist now is silly. <laughs> I mean, that's the way so I look at it. So your recommendation to medical students today is yeah. the most exciting oh, subspecialty is neurology. Yeah, because I mean, first you got to, the only reason medical students don't like it, they like ER and they like fixing joints, but that's like being a carpenter. <laughs> I mean, that, well, that, I that amazes me yeah. that anybody would do that. Yeah, well, I think you've given us a great sales pitch on behalf of your specialty and also on behalf of what's going on in this very exciting area. And I want to thank you very okay, much for pleasure. being here today. And thank you for joining us today for the Drexel interview.